In this video, we're gonna look at how you can manage conditional steps in your test. For example, if test data doesn't have a particular value on one row of your data, then you could skip a field that wants to write that data into an input field. Or it could be to say, if a checkbox is already checked, then you can put in a conditional step to say, don't run a step to check the checkbox. So to illustrate that, what we've done is I've created a test already that is going to go into an e-commerce site, fill out the guest checkout, and then it's gonna come into a user profile page. And the aim here is that what we're doing is we've got some data fields, one of which is gonna be our discount code. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some test data where for some of the data scenarios, there isn't gonna be a discount code. Therefore, I don't wanna run that step. Equally down here, what I'm gonna do is have a step which is to click on a checkbox except if the checkbox is already checked, I don't want to check it. So let's look at how you do that with conditional steps. First off, I'm gonna create some test data and I'm gonna do that using, in our test data, I'm gonna use our new AI tool to generate some test data. So we're gonna call this our uh, checkout data. And I'm gonna say, I want five rows of data uh, with uh, email, full name, uh, phone number, uh, street address, zip code, and then we also want discount code. And then I'm gonna say credit card number and CSV number. So that's the data elements I want, and I want five rows of data for that. So our generative AI will go and create that data for me. There we go. So it's got all the values in, and what I'm gonna do is create my data table now. Now what I'm gonna do in the uh, discount code is I'm gonna remove that for several rows of data. So only two of my rows of data have got discount codes. And then in my test, what I'm gonna do is come and assign that test data table and put in the variables here. So we've got email, we've got full name, phone number, street address, zip code, discount code, and my credit card number and CSV. Now what I'm gonna do is in the step where we get to the discount code, because in my test data table, there are three rows here that don't have that value. I wanna say on this step, I only want to run the step if the data is present. So by clicking on the step here in the step editor, you'll see in the when to run this test step, we can now say if the discount code, and we'll say is not empty, then it will go ahead and run that step. And you see, we've got the little conditional icon here. We could equal do things like if it's defined, if it's equal to, if it's not equal to. So you've got different sort of conditions here. So I could say is equal to, and it could be ABC one, two, three, then it would only run for that one row of data. So again, we can see that I'm going to change in this case is not empty. So I would expect that now to run for this row and this row. So that's the conditional step for that one, which is based on test data. Now what I'm doing down here is I've got the step to be able to um, click on the checkbox. Now I've kind of hacked this a little bit because what I did is I wrote a test step to say, click on the left checkbox, which then made it so it's checked. I then stored the element details of that checkbox and I can see in the variable we have that we've got checkbox and we've got the value is on. So what I'm gonna do now is say checkbox dot value equals on, that will be the condition to not run this step. So if I come down here and I'm gonna say that my click on the click on left checkbox, when to run this step, if the checkbox dot value and is not equal to on, then what I'm basically saying is if this checkbox isn't on, then run that step. If the checkbox is equal to on, then I wouldn't be running it. So now what I can do is I can run this, and actually what I'm gonna do is execute this with test data. I'm gonna run all my five rows of data, and I'm gonna expect for two of the scenarios, so this one and this one, I will run the discount code step. Because I've already checked the checkbox in a previous step, then I expect that this step will not run for any of my steps in any of the executions. 
So if I come to the project activity and then we look at the test running, then we can see that the tests are running. In fact, a couple have completed already. So if we click in, we can see, for example, on the discount code step here, this row of data had a value. So it's let the test continue. Whereas if we come to the second row of data, we can see that there is no value in the discount codes. You can see the step hasn't been run. This shows as orange for the conditional indicator, which tells us that that step didn't run because it's, uh, it's empty. So then the only one is to come down and we can see on the last step here, because we've checked the box and it's now checked, and in the value we can see that the value equals on, then we're skipping this step. And again, it's gone orange because we only wanted to run that step if the value of the checkbox was not on. So basically if it wasn't checked, then I should run that step. So you can see we've got some conditions here at the step level where we've been able to either by test data or by the attributes of an element, we've been able to conditionally control whether we execute test steps. Note as well that if we come back to our test that you can also run more advanced JavaScript in these. So if you want to put in some advanced JavaScript, then you can choose to do that as well. So you could put a more extensive function in, but probably most of the time you'd just be using the standard if step if you want to run conditional logic on an individual test step.